Welcome to Behavioral Health Today, a podcast brought to you by the Triad Network. This podcast is designed to share trending topics occurring within the world and our communities and bring them a behavioral and mental health perspective. Welcome to Behavioral Health Today. I'm your host, Dr. Graham Taylor. My guests today are Michael Haller and Terrell Sengal from Leniosis, a pioneer in bioregulation technology that utilizes state-of-the-art biofeedback and pulsed electromagnetic field therapy and creates innovative bioregulation therapy by enhancing biological communication at the cellular level. These therapies support the body's natural regulation and healing activities. Michael is a graduate of Linwood University and is licensed as a mental health counselor with over 37 years of experience, specializing in individual, couples, and family therapy, as well as neurofeedback. He's also the past president of the Florida Mental Health Counselors Association. Tarul is a founder of Nestatech Incorporated, a company that provides advanced wellness technology solutions, supporting practitioners with innovative and effective therapy options. With more than 20 years of experience, he's worked at the forefront of technology innovations across a number of industries, including information technology, telecommunications, and healthcare. We're excited to have Michael and Terrell with us today to discuss bioregulation therapy, leniosis, and the work they're doing with advanced pulsed electromagnetic field technology. Michael, Terrell, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to have you both here with us. Hey, as we start out today, share with us how you both met and what were some of the early conversations you guys had together that brought you into the field of bioregulation therapy? Well, I think the way we met was I initially signed up for a, a presentation on the equipment and then kind of engaged in some conversations with Tarul and ended up buying some of the equipment. And I think I probably annoyed him with a whole bunch of questions <laughs> and demands of more training because, you know, we don't, we as clinicians don't do what we're not trained to do. And so as I asked more questions, he started saying, you know, you're, you're asking different questions and it kind of indicates a, a real interest in it a forward thinking way. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. Yeah. And then I kind of dragged him kicking and screaming by his left hind leg into being a, a promoter at the Florida mental health counselors association conference, because I'm on the board there. And then yeah. I spent most of my time with him that, that weekend, my free time talking and, and talking to other clinicians about how I used it. And then he kind of invited me to engage in some training with some of the people in the background of the company and we just sort of slid into home here, as it were, <laughs> and flowed into the process and engaged in a relationship, which I'm frankly enjoying a lot. Very I'm good. Triple, what, uh, what drew you to Michael? Right. I mean, we work with leading practitioners, right? We work with folks who are looking for something beyond the typical tools that they have. And we, we offer a technology that's that's a little bit different and and very effective. So... We're always looking to work with folks who are looking for the next thing. How can I help my clients better? How can I achieve better results? You know, everybody comes with a toolkit, but you yes. always prove what you do. And that's why we were interested in Michael because he was very curious. He wanted to understand how this can help his clients to have better results. And that's how we came together. Fantastic. Well, we're talking about bioregulation therapy here. And it's, this is a, a really unique approach to health and wellness that uses biofeedback and pulsed electromagnetic field therapy to help the body better self-regulate, adapt, and heal naturally. If you would, Terrell, take us into the science of these technologies and what's happening within the body within these types of therapies. Absolutely. So let me, let me start by saying that this has its roots in Europe, right? Uh, a lot of things in this space, biofeedback, PMF, they've been first discovered and utilized in Europe. And that's how we really came into the space as well. I was at a, at a, uh, on a trip in Europe and I found this technology. I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. How can you, you know, use this technology to help people to feel better? Yes. And the technology is really 30, 40 plus years old originally, right? They started with very rudimentary devices. And as the technology improved, you could do a lot more with the same physical concepts, right? So the science has been there. They were just lacking the tools and the, the circuits to put it together. And then, you know, just like everything else in our lives, as the technology improves, you can do a lot better with the things you knew, right? Just like AI and other technologies, you knew you could do these. You just didn't have the, the horsepower to do it. Now we have a technology 
kind of platform where we can create a lot of different therapy modalities much more efficiently and much more cost effectively, but also very effectively for from a results perspective. So that's really where it came about. PMF and biofeedback has been around for many years, six, seventies, eighties. You see research papers from Eastern Europe, you see research papers from Asia and everywhere else. It's just that it wasn't a part of the mainstream. It is becoming mainstream now. Mm-hmm. More and more you're gonna you're we're seeing clinicians looking for other ways to help. And really? I always say PMF and biofeedback is, is the science of physics versus chemistry, right? You know, we've been following the, the, the development of helping people using the science of chemistry. What's chemistry? It's really using uh, technology to create pills so that you can take your pill and feel better. But you can also use the science of physics to help people because the body is an electromagnetic being. And if you can help the body to regulate better using physics, then that's where you get into how it works, right? And how it works is really about helping the cells to work better, more efficiently, helping the body to regulate itself by communicating better inside the body so that the organs and the, and the systems can do a better job. Our bodies are always trying to improve themselves. So if you, if you have an accident and cut your finger, there's a team of workers already starting to work to start healing that cut, right? You don't have to think about it. It's an innate process. And it's always the same in the body where if you can provide a little bit of help from the outside, then the body can achieve that result much faster. Really good. I, I, I really appreciate that piece. You're talking about this as using energy because our body is comprised of that and we get to use that process to help heal. You talked about the studies. There are over 2,000 studies done in Correct. this technology with many double-blind and placebo-controlled studies showing really, again, efficacious use for the therapies that you're doing. Go a little bit deeper if you would. I'd, I'd appreciate this piece because I'm going to have Michael come back in here in just a moment and talk about how he uses it in his practice and what he's seeing other practitioners do from the clinical side. But what's going on in the science behind this, Tarot? Yes. Yeah, so let me start with that, and I will ask Michael to compliment from a clinical perspective. Yes. The science behind this is actually very straightforward. We are composed of billions of cells, right? And the quality of your cells and the teamwork within the cells define your health. If your cells are healthy, you're healthy. If your cells can work together as a team to, to perform a certain function, then you're healthy. I'll give you an example. When you have issues with your liver, right? Say your liver is not performing well, there could be two problems. One is your cells are dying, right? Or your cells are not working as a team to perform the function that the liver needs to function. And this is the same for all organs and systems, by the way. It's just an example. So if you can help the cells to be functioning better by providing a little bit of an energy, right, from the outside, and help them to communicate better, those two things will help your overall well-being. Because if you have those in place at the cell level, we're talking about ATP, the cell energy, if you can boost that a little bit, but it can also help the communication between the cells by helping them work as a team, then everything else works better. It's really not more complicated than that. The body itself is trying to do its best every single minute. And we're just providing a little bit of a help from outside to make sure that the cells are doing their jobs, they're healthy, they have the energy to do their work, and then they can use the nutrition that's in the bloodstream and also communicate effectively with other cells in their neighborhood so that they can do their tasks. Very good. And you wanted to include uh, Michael in this. Uh, Michael, what are some of your thoughts as we were talking about kind yeah, of how the, this is working? And There are two components to the equipment that we use. There's the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy and the body biofeedback and different devices. One, one of the devices does both. One of the devices just mainly does the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. With the, the device that does both of them, your body, it, it actually essentially becomes a part of the, the electrical circuit of your body. So it takes information out of the tissues from up to four inches or more deep and brings it into the equipment, which then looks at it. And I'm going to oversimplify here because some of the <laughs> mechanics behind this are above my pay grade. But, but essentially, I tell clients, it, it's like a PA system. I used to be a musician in my first career. It's, and you're the microphone and you're the speaker. So it takes information out of your body electrically based on the ideas that the cells communicate with each other electrically, which we know they do. 
So it takes that information and puts it into the device, which is like the PA head, okay, the amplifier, and it literally is an amplifier. And it looks at that information algorithmically and fractally from all angles. Okay, so it's able to look at it on all dimensions. And then it looks at that information and mathematically and, and quantum physically, to coin the word, looks at that, the functioning of those cells and says, are they doing this right? And if they're not, then it adds in the information that the cells need. So it's like a coach electrically, if you will. And then sends that back information in two forms, the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, which comes in at the back pads, which are the antennae that are behind their back as they sit in the chair. And then at a left circuit plate that comes in with the body biofeedback. And it gives those cells the information that they need to cor for corrective action. Nice. So that it helps them to heal themselves. That's why Turrell said, we're not actually treating, we're facilitating the healing to happen. So we're kind of coaching the person's body to do what it needs to do and what it's capable of doing naturally. You know, you use the gram, you use the uh, natural term, and that's really what it's doing. And there's just an absolute beauty in the effects that it has. Um, I get kind of chills as I talk about it. And, and so we tend to use both devices, the, the, what we call the cell common. And then we also have the Nesta mobile unit, which we'll be talking a lot more about. And we combine the two, and then we get sort of the best of both worlds. And so we've got the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, which I think is doing the heavy lifting. And then the body bear feedback is kind of coaching that. And I'm oversimplifying, but I call it like the, the PEMF is the orchestra and the body biofeedback is the conductor. Very nice. So, you know, that, that's how I explain it to my clients because, you know, they need a simple enough explanation that they can get it. Really good. You know, as we're talking about just how this works and the effectiveness of it, the studies behind it, share with us some of the uh, conditions that are appropriate for these approaches, both what you're doing in your in your practice, Michael, to roll what you're seeing maybe in other areas of healing. What are some of the conditions appropriate for these approaches? The world of PMF is is quite wide. You could, you know, the early days of this started with uh, tissue and bone healing, right? It's in the, even the 70s, they were doing a lot of studies on if somebody has a, has a fracture, how do you improve the healing process, right? That's where things started. But when they looked at the, the, the full spectrum of frequencies, you can do a lot more with the, the technology. You can help improve sleep. You can help mm -hmm. decrease anxiety. You can help boost up the, the you know, the, the mood. So there are a number of different, very wide of range of protocols available because you have a full spectrum of frequencies. And I always mm -hmm. give an example. When you think about the current medical system, we have pills for everything, right? If you need, if you're not sleeping, there's a pill for that. If you have pain, you have a pill for that. And if you, if you have other issues, you have different types of solutions. And the, and the, the world of PMF is very similar, but coming from physics versus chemistry, as I described earlier, you can do a lot of things with PMF as well in a very safe manner. It's very gentle in, in most cases, very safe with no side effects at all or very little to, to speak of. So you can provide this help through the broad spectrum of overall well-being, all the way from somebody who has a specific issue to overall well-being, improving circulation and, and sleep, and then anything in between, really. Really good. My son went through a extremely intricate hand surgery. He was a professional athlete and it was almost career ending. And this doctor, he, he said, I won't do it. He said, I don't think I can be successful with it, but he decided to do it late at night, called my son first thing in the morning, said, Hey, if it was my son, I'd do it for him. So I'll be willing to give it a try. So he did. And part of the recovery process was using electromagnetic pulses to help with the, with the facilitation of that healing. And he went on to play for a number of years afterwards. And uh, it was really, really a dynamic healing process. Michael, what are you seeing in your practice uh, in yeah, terms of the incorporation uh, of this? One of the, so let, me, let me address this first. One of the first things that I looked at was that there are so many things that it can do. I, I kind of, I mean, that sounds like a panacea. And that's a criticism that I always anticipate in these. But the reason is because it starts at such a base level mm. that it can then spread out from there. And so it actually can do most of these things because that's what your body can do. It's not that the machine is doing it. The machine is just facilitating your body's ability to heal itself. 
So if I were to say, oh, God, how can this machine do that many things? It doesn't do it. It no, just body. facilitates your body's ability to do it. And there, the, the certain frequencies that we, we know, of, as, as Cheryl mentioned, allopathic medicine, which is our standard Western medicine, goes against the disorder. We give them a pill, we give them a chemical, or we use heat, you know, things that can potentially have side effects or be destructive if we're not careful. Whereas naturopathic medicine, which is where this really kind of, this equipment at least came from, looks at it more like, well, how can we get the body to do what it needs to do? How can we convince mm -hmm. it? How can we facilitate it? And so that's really kind of what I'm seeing as I, as I work. And there, that's why we can do so many things. And that's why Terrell said, we're not actually treating. So there are medical conditions we can alter. Well, we don't alter. We help the body alter it itself. But we're not practicing medicine because we're not doing those things. We're just setting up the, the situation that allows the body to do what it needs to do. Just okay. conducting biofeedback. That's not medicine. In terms of what is this used for, like we have practitioners who are functional medicine doctors. Mm -hmm. They, you know, as you know, functional medicine has become more popular in the last five, 10 years. It's just another way of looking at the body as a whole versus uh, looking at just one organ or one system. And those folks understand this and see how can we help the whole body. And then at the end of the spectrum, you have psychotherapists and counselors who are trying to help, you know, patients and, 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 and clients with anxiety, depression, panic attacks, and sleep issues and so on. So basically, depending on who the practitioner is and what their focus is, there are different pro protocols and set settings in the system that will allow them to achieve that goal. Really Post-traumatic stress disorder, ADHD, depression, anxiety, migraines, pain management, or actually pain reduction, or both. It's just there are all kinds of things that it does. It's, it's amazing. Really good. So as a, as a clinician, you're looking at maybe some of the more of the PTSDs, maybe the mood, the anxiety, those types of things to incorporate in your practice. Is that right, Michael? Yeah. And I'll talk a little, little later about some physical conditions that can, the body can alter them if we help it along. We'll be right back after word from our sponsor. Whether you're a longtime or first time listener to Behavioral Health Today, you're probably familiar with Triad, the company that brings you this podcast. But you may not know that Triad also hosts a community for current and aspiring behavioral and mental health professionals, featuring trending content and education and career resources, all for free. If you are a behavioral or mental health professional, or you're studying to become one, Join more than 80,000 people on Triad by claiming your free professional account today. Visit us at hellotriad.com slash BHT. That's hellotriad.com slash BHT and join the Triad community today. Really good. Really good. Share with us some of the products that you offer for the bioregulation therapy. And are these in office use only? Are they for home use? Both? Yeah, so we have both. Really, we started with the clinical systems first, right? As the technology evolved, we have launched home use systems as well. And these are typically used with clinical support, meaning we basically work with home users through the clinicians because they want to have the full spectrum of support from a clinician. And sometimes, you know, these days, a lot of clinicians work with remote clients and patients, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's becoming, especially post-COVID, that's a very big part of uh, what people do, especially in the mental health field. Right. So how can you help a client who's remote and who, who you see once a week and you do talk therapy? Your tools are limited, right? And if you can provide a rental unit that they can have for the period of time, say they need something for two months, three months, four months, and help them through their progress, that makes a difference. And that is important. And that's easy to use and effective. So if you can provide those tools, that's what people do. A lot of the clinicians have units that they can loan out or rent out to, to their clients, especially if they're remote. But even sometimes when they come in once a week, what do they do between the sessions? Right. If panic attacks, how can you help them during the sessions, right? And then if they have a little device that, that's portable, they can, be, they can use with them and carry with them wherever they go. And if they feel like, okay, I have something coming, I'm just going to turn it on and help me overcome that stressful period, then they will do that. And that's a very easy way to help people remotely. Very good. Michael, I, I want to weave you back in. Share at this point with us what you were going to be sharing in terms of incorporating into your practice. 
Well, um, there are uh, medical conditions that can be helped with this. Um, mm -hmm. For example, I, I had consulted with a gentleman who designed the system, and I used it on myself, and I used it my wife as well. I have a couple of conditions that I've worked with. One is uh, I'm not a spring chicken, as I'm sure you can see. I'm 72 years old. But I was having some things that were happening, like I have essential tremor in my hands, which my father had, his father had. It's benign, but it's annoying. But it, was got, mm -hmm. it had gotten bad enough that I couldn't read my own handwriting anymore. I also had neuropathy in my feet, which crept up to my knees. Uh, I tried to keep this short, but we checked out you know, that maybe that could be a back injury or maybe it could be, I don't have uh, diabetes. It could be blood flow. It could be nerve tissue problems. And so we checked with a neurologist. We checked with the back doctor for the blood flow. Blood flow was fine. Back was fine. Right. The neurologist said, you're SOL. You know, you're just, you'll right. never get this back. Your conductivity in your lower legs is horrible. There's nothing we can do. And then my wife also has autoimmune disorder. She has vitiligo, so it attacks the melanin cells, in her, the coloring cells in her skin. She's Italian, so the coloring in her face went all the way back to the edge of her face. She had big white blotches on her arms and hands and on her chest. Hmm. So about, well, about last February, we started using this equipment. She got her own Nesta mobile unit. I got my own. And fortunately, because I work with the company, we had it programmed specifically for us. Thank you very much for that, Terrell. Um, and now that you see, I don't have the photos with me, but the before and after for my wife, the white blotches are gone. Her coloring mm. has come back here. Her uh, doctors told her there's nothing we can do for autoimmune. Well, apparently there is. And that's a very simple approach. You know, one of the devices has, I don't want to go too much into this, has what's called an input cup, which you put into the circuitry. And so with her, we literally put some of her hair or her certain urine in a little cup in there. Mm -hmm. And to oversimplify what it does is it says, you see this stuff in here? Mm -hmm. This is you. Stop attacking it. <laughs> okay. And it's worked very well. The other thing that's happened with me being my age, my testosterone dropped, but now my testosterone production is coming back online. Mm -hmm. I was taking exogenous outside the body testosterone and I had to decrease it significantly because I kept getting above the levels. Um, so my testosterone production has come back online. That's not supposed to happen, according to allopathic medicine. And I attribute it to what we've been doing. And, you know, yes, we can see them once a week and do the BRT in the office, which we do with the, the, the larger equipment. The mobile unit they can take home and use five to six times a day. And when they do the combination of those, it's like a one-two punch. It's, Fantastic. It's amazing. That I'm is amazing. By it. How's your neuropathy and the tremors? My neuropathy has gone from my knees back down to my feet. So it's improved about uh, 75%. My hands have improved about 75%. And I'm thankful for the testosterone situation too. I'm sleeping better. My mood is better. I've, I've got a lot more strength and a lot more energy. And it's totally benign. There are no side effects. Tarul, you must love hearing stories like this. Yeah, we, we are very happy to hear it every single time. And I also want to highlight the fact that it's not just one tool doing this, right? It's a combination of a number of things. For example, uh, we always recommend uh, and train clinicians in, in working with their uh, patients and uh, clients to work on their diets and supplement, right? What do they eat? Hugely important. And it's becoming, I think, more prominent in how clinicians are approaching this. But in our systems, in the software that we provide, we also provide recommendations. Are you dealing with anxiety or depression? Mm -hmm. Guess what? You should look at these things as well. What are you eating? And what are the supplements that will be helpful? And then you also use the BRT technology and maybe some other ways to help yourself. That's the real result, right? We cannot claim that there's only one thing that will solve everything. We are just a part of the big picture, but we are an important part of the big picture, but there are more things you need to do as a patient or, or client to get back to where you were or even, you know, recover from, from their challenges. I like that. That's a good uh, recommendation. As we're talking about this, are there any contraindications or side effects from these therapies? They're pretty minor. So not really. There's uh, just a couple of things. One is if uh, a client comes to me and says, you know, I've heard about, the, I have a, a reclining chair that I put them in. They said, I, I, I talked to somebody, they want you to put me in the chair. <laughs> And my Monty Python days come back and I go, not the chair, <laughs> you know, the comfy chair. Oh no. So, 
but that's where I have the pads and that's where I do it. But but essentially, if they come in and they say, okay, I've got a pacemaker or a TENS unit or a mm -hmm. watchman or any of that kind of stuff, they have an electronic device inside them, we don't do it. We don't know what it would do to that and we don't want to find out the hard way. Mm -hmm. So I would consider those contraindications. To my knowledge, there's no research on how they affect it. It might not affect them at all, but we're not going to yeah. go there. It's more of a general risk in general. If somebody has a pacemaker and it's been there for 20 years, you know, if something happens, you know, you don't want to take the risk as a clinician, right? Correct. So we, sure. we, we advise just against common, that. Yeah. Just common sense. Other than that, we also don't do it on pregnant women. We don't know what it does to the fetus. We, I'm not aware of any research on that. And again, we're not going to take that chance. The only other thing, which is really minor, is because this works on the gut level, okay, so the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, they're sitting with a pad that's the antenna behind them that goes the length of the, the, the thorax, okay? The, and so it's causing all of those organs in there, the, the lungs, the heart, the, the liver, the kidneys, the bladder, the, the, the stomach, the intestines, the colon, I'm sure I'm leaving something out here, but it causes them all to go back into prime regulating function. That means they, they're more efficient at detoxing what's in the mm. blood. Since it improves their detoxification, and this is something I wanted to be really clear about when I bought the equipment from Teruel, is like I said, you know, that, that piece of tape that you see on, yeah. on a Facebook that you buy, and they see all the toxins when they peel it off, that's just dirt. No, this is your organs doing what they're supposed to do. But when they, they come back online in their full function, then they're filtering the blood better. If you don't hydrate before that, they're dumping all those toxins into the blood. So I always have people drink a glass of water before and a glass of water after. Mm -hmm. And we advise them not to use caffeine for one to four hours before or one to four hours after because it's it's a diuretic. So if they don't hydrate, they could get a minor headache. It's not like a migraine, but it's annoying. If they drink water, it goes away. So that's about the only negative side effect that I know of. I haven't I haven't seen anything. The only other thing, and this is a very simple to fix situation. Some people are very, very sensitive to it. Okay. And so when you, when you start it up, they go, what was that? <laughs> Most people don't feel anything. Okay. And the first thing people always ask me is this electroshock therapy. It's like, no, it's not. It's right. not putting any current into your body. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people, when we put the sensors on them, ask, you know, does this, does it put electricity into me? No, there's no current. Well, it's tingling. I think that's the cells getting activated underneath. Gotcha. Or sometimes people say, does it produce any heat? It does not. But sometimes there's warmth underneath the sensors mm -hmm. where, where we place them. I've felt those on occasion. It's minor. It's your body activating. So your body can't burn itself. So no. Um, but the only other thing, and, and this is a funny phenomenon. I have to, have to laugh about this one. Some people, especially with severe post-traumatic stress disorder, have been anxious for so long, you know, yeah. and their anxious is like this hypervigilance that's their best, best buddy guarding their back. They consider yeah. it protecting them. And this takes away their anxiety so fast that it's almost like, you know, you've got your hands on their shoulders and you tell them to lean back and then you let go and catch them there. <laughs> if they have that effect where they get anxious about not being anxious, yes, which is paradoxical as all get out. Yeah. Or some people that you have to, you don't put them in the chair with the, with the pad. You can sit them in a chair next to the pad. They're so sensitive that they'll get the effects from just being near it. So that's the worst it gets. These but are, even these the, are, the stuff that you get is actually the result of it doing its job. That's right. And enabling the body to have enhanced opportunities to do its job. Yeah. Cumbered here with some really great approaches. Terrell, as we're talking about this, we've got a, a variety of listeners that come in. Tell us about the types of practitioners that this is appropriate for and the type of training that's required to incorporate this into their work. Absolutely. So let me start with mental health. I think that's an area that we do a lot of work in, and Michael comes from that space as well. And there's, there's a big need for technologies like ours, because for the longest time, the only tool they had was talk therapy, which can be very limiting. You know, I had a client who's, who told me one day that she has long-term clients. And I say, what do you mean by that? She says, well, I have somebody who's been coming for six years for anxiety. And I talk, thought to myself, well, maybe something is not working. If there's a person coming to you for six years, that maybe you're not achieving your goals, right? So you need some tools to help you. And, and this is one of the tools. There are other tools that, that are available, but this is a very effective tool. So anybody in the mental health space uh, can use this, this kind of technology, right? 
and very easy to use. We can typically get people up and running in a couple of hours. And then we do, of course, clinical trainings over the course of the year. We do every six weeks or so, we have a little training session for our clinicians. But to get somebody up and running is only a few hours. On the other side of the spectrum, you have people who are in functional medicine. They're MDs, to, you, know, you know, working as a functional medicine provider. And we have acupuncturists. We have MDs, right? And we have any, everybody in between. But mostly, I would say we focus a lot on the mental health space because there's a huge need there which is very easy to integrate. You can take this pad, put behind the client. I can do, they can do talk therapy just like they were doing yesterday, mm. but also get the benefit of the, the technology without changing anything in their environment. Really good. That's huge. They don't have to change their furniture. They don't have to do anything. They just say, okay, can I put this pad behind you while we're talking? And I'm going to set up a session. And if you're anxious, I'm just going to put on the setting for anxiety just to help you calm down. And then they can do the talk therapy, but have a better result, right? And on the other side, you have folks who have a dedicated room for this, where they people come in and only for the therapy. They don't do talk therapy. They may be a functional medicine provider. They do their intake and do what else they need to do. But this is an, a 40-minute session. They come in and do this and go home. So we have both. Very good. Very good. That's exciting. You know, I was just thinking, I do a lot of EMDR, working with trauma, et cetera. And I'm thinking about what you just shared right there, Terrell, putting this on the couch. And and uh, I'm also going for a knee surgery here pretty soon. I'm thinking about maybe accelerating some of the healing processes post-surgery and, and the pretty nice application of that. When you think about some of these stories, Michael, you were kind enough to share with us about your wife and yourself. Are there any other hallmark stories that you have that yeah. just uh, highlight the benefits of this approach? Yeah, there are just, you're talking about your knee. There are protocols for that. Okay, we have specific protocols for bone healing Very and good. for pain and pain management. The other thing that I've run into over the years, because I told you I was a musician, and when I, this was my second career. So when I came into this field, they said, oh, you were a band leader, so you're going to be great with teenagers. I'm like, but they're hard. Turned out they're not for me. But the only ones I had trouble with were the kids who had ADHD, because mm -hmm. as I learned back then, back then, they didn't really know what ADHD was. Now we know, because I've done neurofeedback too, that ADHD is an under aroused left hemisphere. Okay. And we also have sensory integration issues, which are over aroused right hemispheres. And we did those things with neurofeedback, but it was pretty limited. Although I thought it was great. I was leasing my system. I've sent it back because this has a biofeedback component to it. So if you were doing neurofeedback before, this can do that too. I'm like, why am I paying for two sets of equipment when I right. only need the one? Um, but things like ADHD that are a physiological, biologically based disorder, or things like OCD that mm. are biologically based, bipolar disorder, we have protocols for those. Mm. Schizophrenia, we have protocols for those. And, you know, just an, an example here, because with ADHD, I would train the brain and, and it would take me 20 to 40 sessions. That's what the research shows. With this equipment, it's 8 to 11 sessions. Huh. Okay. With anxiety, I'm getting results in minutes. Their anxiety is dropping in minutes, okay? And then the effects are much longer lasting, and, and the, the ultimate effect is, is more permanent. I had a 17-year-old young man came in, and he had OCD, pretty severe, you know, rituals and the, and the obsessions. And he also said, when I get the bad thoughts, I get acid reflux, mm. okay? And so he came in. And I put him on, I did some talk therapy with him, tried, you know, see what I can do. But, you know, with that type of disorder, all you can do is coach them to manage it as best they can. Yes. Well, it's sort of like saying to a person, well, let me get you the best crutches I can get you or the best wheelchair I can get you. But what if I could get you to walk again or run or play sports? So he comes in and I, I came up with the OCD protocols and worked with him. And he basically would go to sleep. And nine sessions later, he doesn't have OCD anymore, and the acid reflux is gone. He doesn't have it at all. It's not that well, he's you gave him his life back. Yeah. yeah. Got another young man that had OCD. He came in for the, the treatments in the office, and he also got his own Nesta mobile unit and significantly reduced the ACD. Now, you may not be able to completely get rid of it, but maybe you can. But if you can even at least eliminate most of the symptoms... It ain't broke. Don't fix That's it. That's a different life. Yeah, yeah, really good. Those are exciting. Terrell, any uh, hallmark story on your side that you've heard shared back with you? Oh, we have we have a ton, but I want to highlight a couple of areas. We have a, a client in uh, 
in Virginia, and it's a large office with multiple clinicians in the mental health space. And one of the clinicians have a fear of flight, so she couldn't get on planes, and she was getting panic attacks, right? So uh, I think it was last Christmas. She actually worked through the panic attack protocol before she flew to see her family. And she reported zero issues. She felt no problem at all. She could go home, see them, come back, no issues. And that's huge for somebody who could not go see their parents. Absolutely. Why? Now she can, and we only done a handful of sessions with her. And I want to highlight one more thing that is, I think, important. You mentioned EMDR earlier. A lot of our users use EMDR, and this is a perfect way to combine this with any yeah. other tool you have. EMDR is one. A lot of our commissions are EMDR practitioners. A lot of our commissions are neurofeedback practitioners. Mm -hmm. right? as, as we briefly discussed, we're working mainly with the body, and they're working mainly with the brain. Yeah. Guess what? They're connected. So if you can work okay. on both sides, you get better results much faster. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think part of the scientific, this is, this is me theorizing, okay? But if you, I don't know if you've read the, the polyvagal theory, Stephen Porges, mm -hmm. excellent book. Yeah, it's not. But if you think about it, the vagus nerve goes from the brain stem all the way down to the colon, all right? It's yeah. the biggest nerve in the body. It has three circuits. It has the ventral circuit, the central circuit, which is the sympathetic nervous system, and the dorsal circuit. And so one of the things I've seen really twofold and speaking to what Terrell just said, and also with EMDR, and I'm not, I'm not criticizing EMDR. You know, we, we do what we're trained to do. I'm not trained to do EMDR. I know it's well-researched and it's an excellent process, but I've had people come in who had done EMDR with other clinicians and said, I just got stuck. I can't seem to get any further or people who have horrible PTSD. But I think what's happening now is when, when they're doing the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy in the thorax that the vagus nerve is being bathed in that mm. and it's calming the vagus nerve down. So yeah. when we're working with the brain and neural feedback, doing alpha theta protocols for trauma or whether we're doing EMDR, rapid eye movement, mostly focusing on the brain, but I'm sure it's working with the rest of the nervous system too, but we don't know to what extent. But the vagus nerve, when it gets calmed down like that, I've had several people who came that were stuck after EMDR that were able to finish what they needed to do. Right. And I think yeah. it's because I took it down through the body and got that vagus nerve to learn to be calmed down and stay in ventral vagal. When it's in ventral vagal, it's calm, focus, and properly regulating all those organs. So that just causes us to feel good. And usually when I have somebody that's really, really anxious and I do a simple foundation protocol, by the end of the hour, the most common thing I hear them say is, I feel like I just had a glass of wine. Right. Not the drunk part, just the calm yeah, part. Just the relaxed and calm part. Yeah. Very exciting, guys. Terrell, where are you seeing the future of these therapy approaches going? What are you, what are you seeing kind of unfold in the future here? I think it's going to be more and more mainstream. We're going to see it in, in a lot of different practices. Just like I always give this example of acupuncture, right? 30 mm -hmm. years ago, people didn't believe in it. And they, it was very strange and, and it was foreign to most practitioners. And now in almost every major city, you have tens of practitioners, right? In every, every main city, there are several practitioners and, and it's proven that it works and, and you people go and visit their acupuncturists for multiple reasons. So this is becoming more mainstream. I can clearly see that. I can clearly see that because I'm talking to people who are uh, working for the government are interested in this technology. They're like, yes. how can it's in a government, you know, a VA hospital, how can we use yes. this in a community hospital? Yeah. And acupuncturists are now connecting electricity to their needles. Yes, correct. I've heard that too. Yeah. They're do correct. They're doing it. So this is becoming a tool in the toolbox. And they can be anywhere in the spectrum of the, or they can be a functional medicine provider, a doctor, or they can be a, mm -hmm. a mental health counselor. Everybody in between will have one way or, or another using the technology if they're open to it. Now, uh, just to highlight uh, another important factor in integrating this to practice what about insurance, right? This is that the biofeedback piece is covered by insurance. The PMF is not, but I've seen papers written by large insurance companies looking at this technology to see if they will cover it in the future. I think they will because it will be so beneficial for them to decrease their cost. Absolutely. It works. So it will be another thing that, you know, and maybe next year we're going to see one or two of them start covering PMF therapy, just like they would cover, you know, a physiotherapist, they will cover acupuncture, they will also cover PMF, and that will open up the floodgates. That would be ideal. 
There's, there's yeah, Michael. here too. Like I said, I used to do neurofeedback. When I was doing neurofeedback with somebody, I couldn't talk to them because if I did, I'd interfere. With the, the bioregulation therapy, I can put them in the chair and I can have a full session with them. Right. And it doesn't interfere at all. If anything, it amplifies what I'm doing. And if I'm doing a psychotherapy session, the insurance company doesn't get to tell me what tools I use. Mm -hmm. So I can bill legitimately for a psychotherapy session. That's and if right. I'm using an adjunct tool, okay, so much the better. And just as an example of that, and I, I'm sure you and a clinician have ever worked with PTSD have had the same thing happen. I'm thinking of a lady that came in earlier this year who was curled up in a ball on my sofa in her first session, just crying hysterically and couldn't get her story out. Mm -hmm. And I taught her about P uh, BRT and put her on the machine. And then she started telling her story. But as it's calming down the vagus nerve, Yes. Uh, and usually what I do is I ask people, whatever you're dealing with right now, put it on a scale of zero to 10. And of course she said 15, 10 being the worst. And by the end of the session, she was at a one. She wasn't crying anymore. That usually takes three to three sessions and they're still walking out the door hurting yeah. if they come back. Okay. Yeah. It's like taking out a splinter that's going to hurt. And she was able to tell me the whole story. And the story was that her ex-husband had come and kidnapped her at gunpoint took her out to the Everglades and had a shovel in the back of his truck and made her dig her own grave and told her he was going to kill her, cut her up into little pieces and never tell anybody ever whatever happened to her family was important to her. She at least wanted them to know where she was. And so she's digging her grave. He drank enough Jack Daniels to pass out. She then drove back to town and that had happened a year before and she'd never told anybody. And I was the first person she could actually get the story out. So I've had that happen many times in my career. And I've never had a tool like this that could actually, she was able to tell the story and walk out feeling good. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Really good. Well, this clearly works. The research behind it, your guys' stories and your own therapy and the feedback you're getting, pretty exciting. Hey, I, would, I know we're kind of winding down here for today. I would love our listeners to be able to follow up with you and your work and your products. How can they do so after the show? Right. I think the best way to do will be to point them to our website. And one of the best ways we can help them is to ask them to set up a demo if they are interested. We can certainly provide the documentation and the literature for them to review. But for us to be able to share the, the features and the software, we will need to talk to them because that's how we can explain what it can do and answer their questions. So I would point them to bioreg.us and layersys.com, and I'm sure we can share that uh, later in the podcast, those links. And those two links will take them to a whole host of information, different case studies, and we have a lot of webinars available for the clinicians to watch free of charge so they can see what others are doing and learn from that. And then, and if they're interested, they can schedule a demo and talk to us. But Tarul can put them in contact with me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Oh, that's great, Michael. Thank you for that as well. We're going to put those up on our site uh, after the show and Folks will be able to click on those and go right to the site. It's a really great site, folks. It's got a lot of great videos on it, some good information to look at things and the, the research behind it. So it's really dynamic. Michael Turrell, it's really great to have you here with us today. Thank you for sharing what you're doing with the therapies, these stories, and what a, what a wonderful approach to helping our healing process in our lives. So I sure appreciate it, and I enjoyed the show with you both today. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you been great to be with you. I also want to thank you, our listeners, for dropping by and joining Michael Turrell and me. It's always great to have you with us. Regarding our episode today, I want to remind you that it and its resources and all of our other episodes can be found on our webpage at triadhq.com slash BHT. Thanks again for being with us on the show, and we'll look forward to having you back with us next time on Behavior Health Today. We appreciate all the support from our community, and if you like our show, one of the best ways you can support it is by giving us a five-star rating and leaving a review. Behavioral Health Today is a podcast part of the Tribe Network, all rights reserved.